Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended really itchy and irritable ears and we're just commencing with this there left ear. This is the worst ear out of the two and you can see that the patient is suffering from a condition called otitis externa. Otitis externa is an umbrella term given to an infection inflammation or uh, eczema or psoriasis of the outer ear canal. Um, so the outer ear it consists of the pinna. The pinna is the flap of cartilage on the side of our, on each side of our head. Um, the auditory meatus, also known as the ear canal itself, and the outermost membrane of the eardrum. So if there's any infection, inflammation or itchiness or irritation of the, the pinna, the auditory canal, and also the outermost membrane of the eardrum, which is facing towards us when we're looking into the ear. We label that as otitis externa, and this dry wax and skin, it was really, really bugging the patient. And they went to see the doctor. They've been prescribed some medication for the otitis externa, but of course, this blockage does require removal. So I've just commenced uh, with microsuction here. And I have detached some of the skin. You can see the skin that's enveloping this dry wax plug um, off the canal wall. And I'm slowly just trying to tug this away. However, I think in a moment I'm going to use some forceps. So we shall see. They have got quite a bendy ear canal. You can see the ear canal veers off to the right and then back to the left. There's quite a pronounced um, chicane within the ear canal. So I've just gone back in with the microsuction probe at the moment. And I think it's now that I'm going to use the, the crocodile forceps. And I'm just trying to get a good grip. As you can see, that as I'm gripping, I'm trying to lift upwards and away. So before tugging at it, I'm trying to lift it off the canal wall. You can see the bottom of the canal that the skin is moving away towards the eardrum. And now I've got a good grip and I'm trying to pull it away. However, it just um, sliced away, cut away at the skin. It didn't remove all of it. So I'm going to go back in. Again, I've got a good grip and I'm just tugging up and down as I'm extracting. It's quite a thick layer of dead skin this patient had. Now the ear canal is actually clear. The eardrum is visible in the distance, but the ear canal is coated with this dead skin. So we need to remove this not only from the ear canal, but also from the patient's eardrum. So there's the eardrum in the distance. Now they can definitely hear better even at this stage of the procedure, but not a hundred percent because we need to still remove the skin. And this thick skin just adds uh, to the th overall thickness of the eardrum. So when the sound hits the eardrum, because it's thicker, it still vibrates, but not as much. So I'm just now using the fine end suction probe and we're tugging the skin away from the front part of the ear canal, the anterior canal wall, and then from the roof. I'm just bringing it down. And you can see how thick it is, this skin. So, so quite often, if you put drops in at this stage, some olive oil spray it can help. But wherever possible, when I've got a patient who's suffering from otitis externa and they've been prescribed medication already, um, I try to keep the ear as dry as possible. So I'm really tugging at this, you can see, I'm really working at it. Because this is on the bony part of the ear canal, we can't simply just use a, a hook to glide in between the canal wall and skin and retract it because that would be uncomfortable for the patient. So we're just trying to manoeuvre this skin off the canal wall without making contact with the, the bony part of the ear. So the outer third of the ear canal for new subscribers and viewers of my channel. So the ear canal can be divided into threes, three sections. The outer third, that's made up of cartilage. So cartilage is flexible, it's malleable, um, it's got a bit of give, give and purchase and if you do apply some pressure on the cartilage, it's not going to be uncomfortable for the patient. Uh, whereas the inner two thirds of the ear canal, it's uh, made up of bone and the bone is of course rigid and it's very sensitive. There's a thin layer of skin 
approximately between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters in thickness. And uh, the skin that lines the outer third, the cartilaginous portion, is a lot thicker, it's about a, a millimeter in thickness. So the, the bony part of the ear is very, very um, sensitive. So whenever we are working this close to the um, eardrum and on the bony part, it's like that game of operation. You want to avoid making contact with the sides of the canal wall and, of course, the eardrum. So you can see the skin here. The eardrum is uh, visible now, so we managed to peel the skin off the eardrum already, but there is some thick skin just in the back part of the canal wall near the eardrum. The eardrum looks otherwise quite healthy. So I'll just go into the roof to see if I can peel it down. So in most people, this skin that I'm peeling away will naturally shed and migrate out of the ears. So this, the outer layer of the eardrum is made up of the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the canal. And as that skin dies and sheds, it should move sideways, um, approximately between 1.5 millimetres and 3 millimetres a month. And slowly but surely that skin will travel all the distance of the ear canal and exit the ear by the entrance of the ear canal. So the skin sheds in a conveyor belt motion. But unfortunately for this patient, the skin's not, it's dying and it's shedding, but it's not migrating. So it's collecting within the ear canal. And then it becomes dry, crusty, it becomes very itchy for the patient. So there's some residual dead skin here in the inferior recess. It's a very difficult region of the ear to access. But, um, as we approach the eardrum, the, about a half a centimetre away, the ear canal narrows and then it widens back outwards, it protrudes back out. And when the ear canal protrudes back outwards, it creates a, a basin, a, a little trench at the bottom of the ear, ear canal near the eardrum. We call that the inferior recess. And also it creates an alcove to the front part of the eardrum. Um, and we, we call that the anterior recess. And quite often you can get wax and skin that gets trapped. So I'm going to try my best to remove this. I, I can't really go any... It'd be any more aggressive now because we're really close to the eardrum, but I did manage to tear away a little piece there. I think there's a little bit left, but we can live with that. And now I'm just gonna mop up some of this skin around the edge, but the undercoat, so the the layer of skin that's lining the ear canal now, as we enter there, looks very healthy. It's a baby pink colour. And hopefully the medication prescribed by their GP will help with all this dry skin. After the course of their medication, their prescribed medication, I've just advised the patient to use some olive oil spray, medical grade olive oil spray, uh, on a, a weekly basis. And what the oils do, they help to moisturise and um, hydrate and lubricate the skin that lines the ear canal, prevent it from drying and cracking like in the, like this patient's suffering from at the moment. Our ears should naturally produce oils in the first instance. So um, you can see these hair follicles here at the root of the follicles, sorry, these hair strands at the root um, where you've got the hair follicle, there, there should be a sebaceous gland and the sebaceous gland secretes an oily, uh, fatty um, substance called sebum. It contains uh, cholesterols, alcohols, saturated and unsaturated fatty chains, um, squalenes, and all these organic matters, they are uh, very um, oily and fatty um, in composition. And the sebum secreted by the sebaceous glands, then as it reaches the surface of the uh, the ear canal via the, the, the hair strand itself, it spreads and it's, it almost uh, applies a thin veneer of the sebum all the way around the edge of the ear canal and also the eardrum quite often. And this veneer of the sebum helps to, uh, as I said, hydrate and lubricate and moisturise the skin that lines the ear canal. Um, so it provides a protective lubricative barrier. The oil is slightly acidic as well, so the acidity helps to inhibit growth of certain pathogens, uh, certain ba bacteria and fung fungi. 
So it tries to keep the hair healthy. But in some cases, our ears, the, 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 the sebaceous glands, um, they shrink or they become inactive, which means there's no natural oil secreted by the ear, which can lead to very dry, itchy skin within the ear canal. So this is just the right ear. Again, uh, it's not as bad as the, right, um, the left side, but we've just removed the big piece of wax and, and just doing a skin peel now for the canal wall. Um, the olive oil um, spray that I use, if you're based in the UK, you can actually purchase it from our website. Feel free to visit our website. You can see it at the bottom of the screen there, www.clearwax.co.uk. And if you visit our online shop, it's called the Clear um, Olive Oil Ear Spray. Uh, for, uh, for the purposes of conflict of interest, um, uh, Clear are a UK-based company and they have appointed me as their healthcare advisor. Um, so prior to accepting the role, I uh, did a, a good uh, evaluation of their products. They've got some other ear care products there as well, and I was very impressed by it. And um, it's a medical grade oil. The way medical grade oil differs to home um, cooking oil, for example, is, for example, if you've got some extra virgin olive oil in your kitchen, um, the way the extra virgin olive oil uh, is the way it's refined and separated and processed um, involves the use of chemicals, whereas medical grade olive oil, the purest part of the oil, so the inverted commas, the extra virgin part of the olive oil, is separated without the use of any chemicals. So it's got no impurities in there, which makes it really, really safe to use for the ear. It's also slightly less viscous as well, so it's... Um, uh, the viscosity of home cooking olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil even, is a lot thicker than medical grade oil. So the benefits of that is that once you apply the oil in your ear and then you come to drain it, so we normally say put a couple of squirts in your ear, tilt your, your head to the side so the ear that you've put the drops in is facing the, towards the ceiling. Uh, allow the drops to penetrate for a minute or two and then after that you tilt the head in the opposite direction so you allow the oil to drizzle out so that ear is then facing the floor just to place a tissue underneath your ear and that will collect the excess oil so the thinner more watery type of consistency of oil drains out of the ear much better. I hope you enjoyed that video and do stay tuned I've got loads more videos to upload and speak soon. Bye!